This is an advertisement music. Seriously, Andre, it's like you driving this and popping out and going, I feel good. I feel good today. I feel energized. I feel like exactly. it's a special day. That's what that music's for. And it's for. because um, I'm in my hoopty. In your hoopty. <laughs> in my hoopty. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Talking Trucks. Howdy, folks. Of course, we have Nathan. Nice to see you again. And Andre. And this yeah. is a special day. Um, aside well, from the fact that it might be Andre's birthday. Um, <laughs> it is my birthday, actually. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, but we have, um, we have some interesting stuff to talk about. And uh, this is the first time Andre and I have done a show together in several months. So I'm excited. I know. We used to do it back in the day when we used to sit on couches. Mm -hmm. Old school. But today is all about the top 15 light-duty trucks and SUVs that were sold over with over 200,000 miles. So in other words, uh, used car mart or whatever, buying a vehicle with over 200,000 miles. And look, a lot of people wouldn't do that because that's an awful lot of mileage, but there are people in the house who have. And also, this data comes to us courtesy of our friends at iccars.com. That's correct. They analyzed over 13 million vehicles that were sold in 2017. And this is the data from that is based, this is what the list is based on. Okay, but before we get started, uh, we need to talk about our sponsor. Um, you guys. Yep, that's right. So um, you can actually, if you wish to sponsor us, use Super Chat. And if you do, then uh, if you have a one to five dollars, you get a mention, and then five dollars, you get to go up on the on the hood for all of time. All of time. It stays there forever. Ten dollars, you get a sticker. Uh, Twenty-five dollars, you get a TFL car truck and patch. Boom. Boom or boom. Those are pretty special. Old yes. school patches. You could put them on your backpack or your jacket. <laughs> and then, of course, you have the hat, and we can sign it for you if you'd like. Um, and if you'd like it not signed, totally understand. So, yeah, that's... Um... And as always, we have a lot of people already in the chat room. Uh, some of the guys that have been here for many, many weeks and months. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, so, like, uh, Multiple Purpose Reviewer, Chase, uh, a lot of the other guys, Ben... Um, exotic Yeti is here. Yeah, I remember that name. The, the Exotic Yeti. Um, so, guys, right before we get started, um, one thing to mention. If you guys have had a truck or car that has over 200,000 miles when you either sold it or purchased it, let us know in the comments over there. Right. We both had several, actually, passenger cars with over 200,000 miles. And trucks. And um, I... Personally, I had a, my old um, Chevy Silverado 2500, which I sold. It was less than 200,000, but it could still go another. But heavy duty trucks are not part of this list. No, they're not. And that's actually kind of disconcerting. And the reason why is a lot of people own heavy duty trucks with three, 400,000 miles on them, and they'll replace the engine and transmission and just keep it going. And also, we'll do a separate show on that. How about that? That's a really good idea. Yes. All right, let's get started, Andre. Chevy Colorado is first on our list, number 15. And this is an older one. Actually, this is one of my favorites. Uh, the, the, you know, extreme sports versions of the truck. Yeah, but that interior was still... Uh, uh, well, look, look at this badge, V8. This is back in the day where they had the 5.3 V8 in there. That was pretty cool. I, mean, I wish they did it again. 1.5% of Chevy Colorados had uh, up to or over 200,000 miles when purchased. That was sold in 2017. That's really remarkable. Um, well, it's a small percentage, but it's on this list. Yes, That's it remarkable. is. Okay, and the next one is one I'm not surprised in. I actually thought, oh. Ian Gonzalez just donated $20 Mexican. Oh. And he says, any news about the next-gen Tundra? Not uh, a lot of news. The no. Tundra is, is a really... Okay, can I be candid with you guys? It's a pain in the neck. Do you have a pen? Um, yeah, a marker? Right pen? Marker. Oh, hey, uh, boss, we need the uh, marker. Uh, we need a producer or marker. Anyway, well, keep going on the Tundra. So the whole thing about the Tundra, we've been trying to get information on it, and all they're doing is little facelift here, an extra s suspension here, you know, the sport thing. That's right. Little tiny things. But we also know for a fact that they are working on a replacement, which will be supposedly more efficient, more powerful, and a better truck overall. What does that mean? Well, any automaker would say the exact same thing. So, yeah, they've hinted to that. But what else are you going to say? Are you going to say, well, yeah, we're going to build a new one. It might be good. It might be better. Right. Of course not going to say that. So, so that's the thing. We don't have, we just don't know yet. Um, no, and as soon as Toyota releases anything, 
a teaser image, any specification, we will let you guys know. Thank Absol you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, and, you know, Toyota has long life cycles of their vehicles. Man, so this is I... the latest uh, Tundra, the 2018. I'm sorry, my voice is going just a smidge, so I really um, I apologize about that. But here's the thing. The Tundra is not the most, actually, it's the least, um, efficient truck out there and half done the market. Yeah, it still has the old transmission. It has R right, the six speed and the 430 rear end, but it's one of the more reliable ones, and we've seen data to prove it. Right? We have, and it is on our list uh, later. Later on. Yeah. You will see it on this list. We have a few people. First of all, I appreciate your happy birthday wishes. I really, really enjoy that. Um, Juan and um, I'm sorry. No, that's um, right. Golden Saucer and Jimmy. Um, all of you guys are wishing me the best. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully we answered your question, um, Ian Gonzalez, but as soon as we get more Tantra stuff, you will know, either on this show or at tfltruck.com, you will know. And where does Ian go to send us his information so we can mail him Something, a, 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 a sticker? A sticker? Yeah. Um, ask at tfltruck.com. Please send us an email with, with a, um, an address and we'll, we'll send you a sticker. And his name goes on the board yes. too, yeah? Yes, yes. Keep going, the next number, number 14, what, what is that? <clears throat> you got it. That's the Nissan Titan. And a lot of people kind of lament the passing of the old Titan because it was a good truck. I, you know, I know that Nissan had a problem. They didn't expand the fleet when they could have and should have, frankly. Did you guys know that they actually had a deal in the works with Ram for a little while where they were going to start building the new Nissan Titan on a Ram platform? That's the truth. It didn't go through. There are a lot of political reasons to why, but that was something that they had actually seriously discussed. Go for it, Andre. Multi-purpose reviewer just broke the scale. Oh, yeah? He donated $300 just now. Holy cow! Because of Trucker Dan videos, who also donated $300. Wow. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, so he's calling out Trucker Dan videos because Trucker Dan has been one of our largest supporters. Yeah, he's been ever. a huge supporter. But now that's no longer the case. Now, multi purpose reviewer threw down the gauntlet. I don't know what to say. Uh, send us a list of requirements. I mean, we'll send oh. you this if you want to. Um, All I could say, it could buy a couple of vodka shots this weekend. <laughs> Probably. Or bail money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you very much. We do appreciate it. And um, please send us a, an email and let us know if you're interested in having anything in particular. A couple hats on top of a couple stickers and then whatever, whatever you want. No problem. Uh, thank you. I'm going to have to circle your name. You've been Underlined it. Underline it, circle it. Ooh, uh, write something uh, cool in Russian next to it. Where is your name? Why you're not? You're everywhere. Okay, so well. Okay, well, while I find it, Age um, is not treating you well so, right now. What? <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm, I just turned 40 years old. Congratulations. I, um, 1.7 percent of all vehicles, Titan. You know, was the high mileage. Yeah, so 1.7 percent, and you know, I almost bought a used Titan. So, oh, you're gonna hit it again? Well, yes, because well, I was so. Multiple Fury was a huge supporter, but also Ramblin' Ram donated five bucks and said, already on the board, but happy birthday, Andre. And I'm also curious what the badge on the desk between Isuzu and Oldsmobile is. So it's also an Oldsmobile badge? Talking about the one to the right there. Old, another Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile badge. badge. It's just the yes. And, and you have decorated our desk uh, for us. Yeah, guys. So what I did for the decorations around here is mostly automakers that are no longer, well, here. And that way, nobody can say that we're being sponsored or favored or be favoring any particular yeah, automaker. This is my favorite, the Saab grill. Yeah, yeah that Saab and, grill. And, and, uh, that was in my stuff. garage for a couple of years. Um, also, I'm sorry, Jeremy's Swartzel, 50 bucks. Well, thank you, Jeremy. I, I, Jeremy, uh, thank you so much. Send us an email once again, asktflchuck.com. I'm overwhelmed with support right now. I yeah, this is not, fantastic. You not, get a hat. I'm not quite sure what to say. So while he's sorting all that out, why don't we move on to the next Yeah, no, seriously. Place. Okay, so so you got to calm down, bro. All right. Somebody <laughs> Breathe. Said, somebody thought I looked older. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's okay. I, if I, anybody I, looks old, it's me. I mean, come on. I, I can take the jokes. <laughs> I, I love that stuff. So. Okay, number 13 <laughs> is the GMC Sierra 1500 at 1.8%. Now, um... It's interesting because the GMC Sierra and the Chevy Silverado, which is also on this list, I mean, they're very closely related. Um, I would, I, I, I think that the truck is actually fairly sexy inside. 
Uh, I like the design of the GMC a little over the Chevy Silverado. I may be a minority in that. Uh, Andre won't answer, so that means he doesn't agree with me. I love GMC design. Okay, so he doesn't agree with me. And then the number 12 is the Ford F-150 at 1.9%. I thought this would be higher on the list because I have some friends prior to the EcoBoost engines, um, back when they had the Triton and some of those other engines, they managed to keep those damn things going forever. But the other engine that I know lasts a little bit longer is some of their diesel power plants, and unfortunately that's not on this list. Yeah, we'll do a heavy-duty truck show um, another time. Maybe not this week, but maybe, maybe next week. Yep. But, but the thing is uh, about the Ford and the GMC and um, – to some extent, the Colorado on this list that we already talked about, they sell in huge quantities. Massive I mean, quantities. F-150 sells like over um, half a million units a year. Sometimes a count, lot more, yeah. If you count the light-duty market. Uh, the GMC is there. The Chevy Silverado is next. Yep. On number 11 on our list. Which is 2.1%. Which is... That's interesting. A little bit more than the Ford. Yeah. And, it and yeah, it's a considerable amount remarkable. over the GMC cousins. So even though they're mechanically pretty much identical. So, interesting to see. Um, and I have seen a lot of Silverados on the road. Camden Jester donated 20 bucks. Thank you. Thank you. And That's he fantastic. says, uh, any news on the new Frontier? The answer is no. That's another Once one's again. driving us crazy. Once again, like the Tundra that's driving us crazy, Frontier is another one. So, there were some updates, though, for 2019. But they were really minor, some oh, trim. Very, very minor. And, and, just and basically, it's like the larger screen that they introduced. Yeah, uh, the larger screen. It looks, it looks the same. The thing is, same. Nissan just is minting money whenever they sell one. So it for them, they're just waiting, I guess. Michelle Luna donated ten bucks because of Nathan's uh, Motor Mountain USA shirt. Why? Thank you. So that project was incredible. Well, that was a whole year's worth of work, my friend. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, twenty fifteen. Uh, yeah. I think I aged several years during that project. The fact that we were able to get along and and hit. I think I hit over about almost 40 states with you 38 states or something like about you? 38 with me but you did many more states i did i did 48 all together and uh some with roman some with emmy Whew, it was an interesting run uh let, let's get back to this um number 10 is the toyota tundra at 2.2 percent yes now there's a story that a friend of ours broke that we've covered as well on a Toyota Tundra that passed over a million miles. Yes. And Jim Esrell did that. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we have that. I think that's on tfltruck.com. Am I correct? Yeah. And also TFL Truck YouTube channel because we did a little walk around of the truck when I was at San Antonio plant. Exactly. And, and that was a really popular video. So you guys probably know about that. I know a lot of guys have Tundras. And in terms of the powertrain and overall components, Supposedly, it's almost bulletproof, but here's the crazy part. It was tied by the Honda Ridgeline at 2.2%. What? Mind blown. Uh, Honda Ridgeline is not a high-selling vehicle, but it's good to know that, you know, people drive these trucks, you know, for a long time, right? Even this if is, it's a crossover-ish truck. It's a first generation. Actually, I appreciated the square design. You know, versus kind of the round, the, the smooth design of the current one. I, I, I like the think? current one better. This one, if you look at the silhouette, it almost looks like it could drive in either direction. It could yeah. drive in both directions. Yeah, that's, um, uh, it's... Just really quick, uh, Sergei uh, Shevtsov says Privet in Russian. Hello. Oh, Kaktila. Uh, so there's some Russian support. Was that good? Russian, yes. Yeah, good. Russian support here. Um, somebody says V8 Raptor or Twin Turbo V6 Raptor. Uh, we published a V8 Raptor video today, this morning, on TFL Truck. That's right. So check it out. It's out there, and that might help answer some of your questions. Uh, here's V8 what, sounds here's better. This. Yes. Um, I, I, would, I would pick a V8. The sound. I'm kind of a sound guy. You know, the power of the twin turbo is amazing, but the sound, you know, the sound. Uh, is... It's a really tough thing. And, and the thing is, Ford pipes in noise to begin with, with the V6. Uh, but the V6 is in almost every way more athletic. So do you go for the better sound? And I think that that actually appeals to people who like Harleys. You don't buy a Harley Davidson because it's the best performing vehicle out there. You buy it because it makes you feel good. It has a great sound, you know, stuff like that. That's why I think where Andre's going with this. Um, somebody says, uh, Dougie Doo says that Nathan comes up to the show, shows a little bit of skin and moneymaker. Hell yeah! <laughs> Drop a thousand dollars, I take the shirt off. Oh, please! No, 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 no. The no, studio no. lights will. No offense. No offense. Burst. This, this It'll is, be this insane. This is rated G. This show is rated for general. Well, I didn't say I was gonna like wind around my head and then go dancing around with you know. No, but uh, thank you, thank you, appreciate that. Um, um, 
So number eight is the Toyota Tacoma. Now, this is another one that I expected further up the list than where it is. Right. It is at 2.6%. I, I mean, I, but see, I know people who have Toyota Tacomas with a quarter of a million miles on them. Yeah. I, had a to I had a Tacoma, and, and I, I terribly miss I uh, just miss that. Oh, thing. I miss your Tacoma. I, I didn't even own it. I love my Tacoma. My wife had to get rid of it. Okay, she's not watching, so that's Okay. <laughs> Damn her. Uh, so that, but I know a lot of guys who would take those things and put another engine in it if it needed it, put another gearbox if it needed it, and just kept the platform. It kept going and going and going, right. even rolling it. Oh, it still runs. And, you know, I, I had 125,000 miles on mine, and I was just breaking it in. Uh, they're so good. So I don't know. Uh, it's surprising that it's that low. I expected it to be like around number seven. Notice, um, so far from 15 to number 8, they're all pickup trucks. Yes, but that all changes on but, number 6. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. This, this is not, we did not organize it by pickups. So, this is the way that the whole 15 list is. Yeah, this has nothing to do with our choice. This is actually the choice from IC Cars based right. on the research they've done. Right, and now we're transitioning to full-size SUVs. Mm -hmm. And actually, for example, Anthony K says, that he bought a 99 Tahoe with 200,000 miles and also a Silverado for 90, 98 Silverado with 130,000 miles and NSG Raptor says he had an F-150 with over 200,000 miles. Yeah, and, and a Raptor with over 200,000 miles? No, 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 that's his name. Oh, yeah. sorry. Got he had an F-150 with, with over that much. I would have been surprised but, to sell the cool, Raptor. Um, wouldn't it be cool to do a story on a Raptor with, with that mileage? You guys contact us with, when you know somebody who has over 200,000 miles on a Raptor that's still running. Email us at askatfltruck.com. We had a long-term first-gen Raptor, the 2014 that Roman you know, bought that for thing. the business. Yeah. We had about 60,000 miles on it. Yeah, we so, did. And some of those miles were hard miles. Yeah, so we were pushing it. Uh, so, number seven is the GMC Yukon at 2.8%. It's the beginning of the SUV run. And the GMC Yukon, obviously built on the same plat or a similar platform to the uh, GM trucks. Um, and really, the next few trucks are related to it. So, no surprise there. This wasn't my favorite year as far as design of the GMC with the headlights. Really? That was not my favorite. I didn't mind it so um, much. Also, the 6.2 liter V8 that yeah. was originally in these trucks in like 07, 08, um, had a few overheating issues. It wasn't like, it wasn't the engine that they got right, right away. Later on, they re they have a new 6.2 and it's completely oh, different. Is, oh, oh, that's one of the best V8s yes. out there. Really, really well made. Um, ben Cunningham, five bucks. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yes. So much support today. You got to make sure you put these names on the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll catch up. I'll catch okay. up. Don't worry. So the next one is the Chevy Tahoe at 3.8%. Now the numbers are starting to really grow. And this is another vehicle where I've seen other vehicle, other Tahoes that have had over 200,000 miles on them. And they've run like, you know, absolutely brand new. It, you know, it depends on so many things, I guess. Some guys just take care of their trucks. And sometimes you get a truck that doesn't last more than 50,000 miles before something falls apart. These things happen. Um, and then on to number five, which is the GMC Yukon XL. So once again, they're all related. And yeah, yeah. 3.9%. The right? Yeah, that's, that's the longer Yukon. And at 3.9%, once again, that's a lot of miles that you could put on a big truck. You know, I have an idea. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of airport shuttles and like limousine car services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yukons and Tahoe. Yes, they do. Sometimes Suburbans which is also coming up. Yep. So that may be one of the reasons why, you know, such high mileage. That's kind of a crazy thing because for the last four that we're going to be doing, once again, we've seen these vehicles with crazy mileage, um, you know, 500,000 miles in some cases. Yeah. And that starts with number four, which is the Toyota 4Runner at 4.2%. Are you kidding me? Wow. 4Runner, it, it's one of those trucks that, um, people buy used and fix them up and realize they have a really good vehicle on their hands. Jimmy Baskin, 25 bucks. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate yes. it. Um, sorry, guys. Support today is amazing. Um, we'll, we'll get... Uh, he says, Jimmy says, if I only had a thousand bucks, but I have two Chevy truck projects. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, um, Dale and Fillenworth donated two bucks, too. Oh. oh. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Dallin Fillenworth, thank you for donating. Happy birthday, he says. Oh, thank you, Dale. Well, he says, say, say thank you. Oh, thank you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, uh, ding, ding, ding. A lot of ding, dings. Um, suburbans. But, so, 
Yesterday we did uh, also a long-lasting show. Uh, I did it with Michael, and it had to do with reliability, right? Yes. As soon as you have a reliable engine, you know things you can just keep it running for a long time, right? No matter what suspension you, I mean, suspension and transmission you have. My friend in Boulder, um, his name is Kelly. He what he does is he buys. He's on his third Forerunner. He buys one that are like 10 years old uh -huh. and drives it for 10 years and gets another 10-year-old Forerunner and then drives it for 10 years. And over time, he builds up so many miles on them. Yeah, they are just such good platforms to work with. But it's really hard to find one in Colorado that's not rusted like crazy because, well, it's Colorado. By the way, did you guys know that the first generation Forerunner had an option for a turbo on their four-cylinder? It's yeah. really rare, hard yeah. to find. Yes, if you find that, grab it because it's a unicorn. Because uh, it's a really rare truck. Uh, very, let's, very cool. Let's move on to number three, which is the Chevy Suburban at five point two percent. Also, the longest running nameplate in yeah. the automotive industry, going all the way, I think, back to pre-war, uh, pre-World uh, War II. Almost seventy years, yeah. or uh, more than seventy years, for the Suburban nameplate. Roman, Roman remembers that first generation when he was going to high school. <laughs> He's not here, so yeah, he's not here. So yeah, so we can make jokes about that. I can make jokes about uh, it. You uh, won't, will you? Well, uh, it's, it's your birthday. birthday. I yeah, can't. is this the only day I can make jokes? No, you can do it whenever you want, my friend. <laughs> um, but here's the interesting thing: I am very surprised to see what number two is. I thought it would be swapped. So number two is the Ford Expedition at five point four percent. Now. I mean, come on, guys! Didn't you think that Chevy would be above Ford with Chevy's legendary? you know, reliability, I think that that is an interesting sign and perhaps something that you should think about in the future because the new Expedition is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and the older Expedition, I see them everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. Um, I think a lot of, you know, Cash for Clunkers program, <laughs> they got rid of a lot of explorers. Yes, and they I did. Think Expedition, you know this better than Well, anybody. yeah, it's my family's wrecking yard in Los Angeles. They, uh, they got a but ton. But Expedition survived. Yeah. And a lot of them are still surviving. You know what's really interesting about the Expedition? A lot of people are giving them to their kids and thinking, you know, I got a big car. I don't want to drive it anymore. Let me give it to my kid. It's got 150,000 miles on it. Just let them drive it around. And the next thing you know, the thing's got 220,000 miles on it. Your kid's off to college in a newer car, and it's still sitting in your driveway, and you just sell it off. I've seen that happen. Like, literally, not just here in Colorado either, but in California and in Arizona. So very popular vehicle and surprisingly robust and good for Ford for making it up to number two on the list. However, they did not make it to number one. Who's number one? Before we get to number one, I found a multipurpose review on our board. <laughs> Multi-purpose rear, thank you for telling me where, he actually saw the hood, he's able he, to, he said, he's I'm able right to here, I'm right here, <laughs> and I circled your name, and, and you're right next to Trucker Dan, there's a whole battle going on in the chat room oh, right now, Trucker Dan and, and, and Multi-purpose multi reviewer, so we appreciate your support, it's, cannot thank you enough, we'll, we'll send you the patches and everything else. And plus, we are working on having a special uh, photo signed giant photo of the entire team and we will be setting i believe trucker dan was the one who suggested that so that'll be something that's coming along in the holidays which is right around the corner well, that's cool yes and number one on the list is toyota sequoia that kind of surprised me actually he, but maybe they don't sell in big numbers though no they don't and it's 6.6 percent .6%, so it eclipses everything else out there by a lot by a lot but did you know that this is one of the few toyota products that is partially assembled by hand yes and, and, and yeah, that's what Toyota engineers told us. This is basically the Rolls Royce of SUVs. I actually said that yesterday too. Yep, and it is a survivor, and they they're built really really well. And you know the V8s are almost infallible. Not necessarily the most powerful power plant out there, um, and definitely not the most thrifty. Jeez, the bad gas mileage right. and the one we just but drove. But very large. I mean, the interior space is amazing. Very heavy, just 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 thick. Yes. If you want to drive something that feels like it's carved out of lead. There you so, go. And by the way, now Rolls Royce does make an SUV, but oh, I, I still like calling this the the, SU, the Rolls Royce of SUVs. So um, you you know we partially answered this. Why don't we have any heavy duty trucks on this list? Well, because I think it deserves its own show. Exactly. And we'll get more data and we'll do a proper show because heavy duty trucks are workers. Yeah, they're they overbuilt. Work a lot. They're overbuilt, so they can get those mileage and those hours. I mean, think about it. The, the mileage is really inconsequential. What it is, what's important on a diesel engine, because most of these are diesel that we're talking about, is the amount of time they've actually been running. So that's 
one of the factors to take into account. So we're going to have to do a lot of research, but heavy-duty trucks definitely deserve to have their very own segment. And they're also uh, business tools. You know, people depend on these vehicles. And a lot of these vehicles people depend on, too, for their livelihood. Absolutely. So it's that, just crazy really that the top of the list was all SUVs. Yeah, that is, that's, that is a little just crazy. But they're also family trucksters, right? Yes, I mean, they are. You take your family to the soccer game and back and forth to the store and Costco. You know how I love Costco. <laughs> On that note, I, I, I'm just worried that Mr. Truck's going to be around here when you say that. Don't he, say Costco he, around him. I took Mr. Truck to Costco to have a sandwich. Oh, man. That was the worst experience ever because he, he doesn't. He, he wanted the waiter to like serve yes. him a coffee and at his age, that's what he expects. And to have a slab of pizza thrown at him by someone who some kid with zits and yeah, make a pizza and you know he that no, he doesn't respond well to that at all. That's not the cowboy way. You know what I'm surprised about huh. on this list? that the Hummer H2 is not on this. Oh, God. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> because we have something special for you guys. Oh, a yeah. Little bit Guess of... a picture. Yes. Guess a vehicle. Picture of the day. Let's start off. <coughs> Which one are we starting off with? There oh, we this. go. Yeah. All right. Now, we... We don't. We can't blow too much time. By the way, if you want, you want to answer any questions that you see there. Give you guys a minute or so to try to figure out what this is. It is a concept vehicle. It never made it to production. And technically speaking, it's two vehicles in one. When they designed this vehicle, they used the undercarriage from one vehicle, and then they used the body from another vehicle, which was a small uh, hatchback. So. Those are the only hints. So if you guess on this vehicle, please send it in the chat room here. Or also in the comments below when uh, this video goes uh, public as a regular video. Should there's I tell a, there's, Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. There's a question from Golden Saucer who says, is Ford F450 for F450 better than an F350? And here's my take on it. Um, obviously, it can handle a little bit heavier load. It has 10 lug b b uh, wheels. Yep. Uh, and, but the 450 is only comes as a dually. So if you want a dually truck, maybe 450 uh, consumer version truck is what you need. But, yep. but the F350 also can be had with single rear wheels. Which some people much prefer because it is a skinnier vehicle and it's easier to park. And there's a few other... And it's easier to go through drive through <laughs> Literally. I mean, I, there, there are places where it's almost yep. impossible to get through with the dually. Okay, let's talk about what we have on the board behind us. What do you say? Uh, looks, so somebody says TRX. No. Is that a Geo front end? Uh, no. Um, looks like a Ford. I'm yes. Not gonna, uh, is it a Pacer Aztec? No, it's not. Okay, uh, so what you're looking at is the Ford Bronco DM1 concept, built in 1987, and it debuted at the 1988 Chicago Auto Show. What? Uh, yes, I've seen this thing close up, and, and it's uh, very eggshell shaped indeed. So this is what it is. Do you guys remember the Ford Bronco 2? Really narrow wheelbase, tippy tippy vehicle. They took the lower section of that and basically removed an upper section of the, the entire car, basically, of a Ford Escort, back in the day, a hatchback, and stuck them together. And then made a unique body with unique panels. I think most of those are fiberglass. And basically did something that, although it does look ugly to some of you guys, think about it, it also is kind of sort of pointing the way towards the future because now we have all of these crossovers that look like cars that are lifted. Well, there you go. That well, was actually, a... Desert Speed Mafia said it was a Ford. He didn't say which Ford. Hey, Desert but Speed Mafia, you still get points for that. Thank you. Points, points. But, but you know, the new Bronco is coming. It is, and it has nothing to do with this one. Nothing to do with this one, but, but this is a, I haven't seen this one. You really surprised me there. Yeah, and there's another one, which actually, this one's going to be on um, tfltruck.com in the near future. There'll be a full write-up on it and its development and information, which I'm putting together. But there's another one that is on truck right now. If you go to truck rewind at tfltruck.com, yes. you'll be able to find this. I'm, I'm covering the He's already. covering it. Okay, so. well, let's talk about the inside of that. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, look boy. at this interior. Is this going to render, or this image is a little pixelated? Uh, it has digital interior with a, with a funky like fighter jet pilot steering wheel. And um, this guys, is a can you very this? special vehicle. Now, unlike the Ford we just showed you, which was basically a quick mock-up, but it was a driver, this went to another level because it was a driver that was built basically to predict the future. It predicted things like four-wheel steering and extremely unnecessary button placement. That is, it's, I honestly, seriously don't think you can get through any of those buttons without crashing. 
But one of the things you could do with this vehicle is control the rear wheels, the pitch of the rear wheels as you're driving. So as you're steering, have oh, because a because separate... a lot of people want to control all, all four wheels. Could you imagine driving on the freeway and inadvertently triggering the rear wheels and all of a sudden you're crab walking? So Hey, uh, Big Green does that. <laughs> it does, but if we don't want it to, there's a difference. <laughs> so this had a very special 202 horsepower all alloy V6, which was never fully used by the company. It also had fully independent suspension and... Wow. Um, so somebody says... Um, see the rear tire? Doesn't that look like it's almost poorly photoshopped in because it's kind of at a weird angle? But it's actually That's turning. Because, exactly. It's turning because of the four-wheel steering Is system. Is it a Plymouth? No. Is it a Sahara prototype? No, it's not. Is it something from the Fiero Chevy? Uh, Chevy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's General Chevy. Motors, yes. It's a Chevy. So this was supposed to be the Blazer replacement of the future. It was called the Blazer XT1. And... They really sweated the details when building this. Now, this predates Delco's four-wheel steering that ha that was put on later uh, General Motors trucks. Yeah, don't don't ask Mr. Truck about quadrants. Oh steer. my God, don't talk to him about that. <laughs> don't unless he you have a, three hours to sit yeah. through it. Um, but the thing is, is that this had it way before then, and it was a very complicated system. And if you can, can you go back to the cockpit, because. Do you see all those buttons? Well, here we go. So the steering system right here. Because we all want a steering wheel that we can't actually turn. Um, you were able to trigger the rear wheels, I believe, with those two. Oh, on the buttons? Yeah. Whoa. So you could independently do it. You could set it to a, its own straight setting. And then there were other settings you could put it on in order to give a tighter turning circle automatically so you wouldn't have to mess with the buttons. Um, and I believe you were able to use another setting for uh, transitioning through lanes. It was extremely complicated. It was one of the earliest versions of any vehicle that was conceived of that had some components that were going to be or had been fly-by-wire. So very, very expensive truck. Made it around for about two years on the uh, new car circuit and then disappeared. Retired. Retired. By the way, the platform that it's based on is actually the smaller Blazer, not the full-size Blazer, but the smaller one. It's kind of hard to tell how big this actually is. It's very small. A couple questions okay. here. First of all, Angel Lopez says, where's the Isuzu on this list? Isuzu was not on our list today. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. A lot Isuzu. of trucks, but, but today, equal number of kind of trucks from around the world. You know, we had some Toyotas, we had some Chevys, GMs, We had a Nissan. And a Ford, and a Nissan, couple Nissans. Oh, no, one, one Nissan. One Nissan. Titan. Um, uh, the uh, Desert Street Mafia says he, he gets the Chevy, so... Good points for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, and also, um, Chase is asking, when is Big Green, or somebody's asking, uh, Tyler Har Harwell says, when is Big Green making a comeback to the channel? Uh, well, soon, I hope. Uh, well, we're having slight fuel delivery issues. Yeah. And it has to do with probably something I did with the fuel injection system. Probably, well, yeah, uh, you put that thing sideways, right? Yeah, initially. Yeah. But, but then we replaced it, and it's now having issues again. So... We just need to go back to the carb. Yeah, um, and you know, the bottom line is that, unfortunately, we have so many other projects that are kicking around the studio right now that uh, Big Green is temporarily delayed. We Hopefully, have the Land Rover. So somebody was asking, somebody said, you know, is live shows everything you do? No, no, no. Live oh, shows no. we do, you know, we try to do them every afternoon, but, you know, we have Tearful Car Channel, Tearful Truck. Also, TFL Off-Road with Stephen Elmer. That's right. We're starting to put new um, material on TFL Classic, too. Yeah, so we have several channels. Ooh, Trucker Dan videos just came back with $99. Happy birthday, Andre. Trucker Dan. Thank you, Trucker Dan. That this, is, this is very whole, generous. This is a whole, you know, duel between Trucker Dan and Multipurpose Reviewer. Well, one thing for sure, that money is going to help when Roman comes to bail us out of jail after your birthday party. Yes, yeah, so I appreciate your support. And this money, actually, which you guys are supporting us, we can use for Big Green. Yeah. You know, we can actually go back to the carburetor and go back to that ZZ6 Midi V8 that we all love and do more videos, including Land Rover videos with our Discovery. Yeah, Discovery, it's, it's uh, running right now, right? Yeah, it's still Sweet. running. And my Hummer H2 is still running. Well, yeah, your Hummer, your so, Hummer has done everything it can to confound me. So I, I actually to want to it. do a, like several winter videos with those trucks. Yeah. So that's coming up. And that's the thing is we're kind of straddling winter. So once the snow starts, we're going to take our Project Subaru. Well, it's not really a project, but our, our Subaru. We're going to Long -term put car. that. Yep. And we're going to put that in the snow and try the all-wheel drive system in the snow. I, for one, am an advocate for Subaru's all-wheel drive system. So I'm curious to see how good it truly is. 
Um, we're going to use the Land Rover and Big Green, and maybe finally we'll set the Lincoln on fire, and then we how have about, some other... How about Felix the Beetle? Yeah, uh, that's right, we got the Beetle. Jeez, we got the Beetle, We too. have a lot of vehicles, so and that's on the large part thanks to the guys who support us. Yeah, that's correct. So, And by the way, if you guys ever have an idea for an episode that you want to see... Just go ahead and throw it on the comments. Yeah, we actually do read an awful lot of comments, and we try to, you know, within reason, absorb what we're getting. And we do respond, too. So when we're done with this broadcast, we will be looking at what's on the channel. And I'll make sure every name is appearing here on the board. And I'll make sure if you send your email to ask at tfltruck.com, we'll make sure to send you the stuff, the hats and everything else, the stickers. And... Uh, just quick, I know we're over time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're being played off the uh, stage. Um, and um, we have several videos. We published the V8 Raptor video to hear more today. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Mercedes Sprinter, the brand new 2019 video coming up. That's soon. right. And also we're working, we're working hard on 2019 Gold Hitch Awards. So that's coming up at the end of September and also October. Uh, so we're, we're doing a lot with trucks. Yeah, and then on top of all that, we have the LA Auto Show coming up. We have SEMA coming up. Yes. We have the last Detroit show happening in uh, January before they move it to May or something like that. So we have all these auto shows coming up back to back to back, and all of that is starting very soon. And can I announce our surf and turf, or should we just hint? Uh, something to do with surf and turf, uh, and it's not just us eating. No, it's not. Um, it has to do with vehicles on two trip. different sides, almost two different sides of the country, driving back to Colorado. So it's a road trip. It is a special road trip. Yeah. So that's uh, so all we're gonna say. I can't say any more because we don't want to jinx it. We still are not at one hundred percent. So and yeah. somebody said Felix versus Big Green coming up right now. Oh yeah, I would do that too. I would so do that because I think that Felix would beat Big Green on a zero to sixty run and jumping. Jumping over not zero to sixty. All right, yeah. Thank you guys. Take care, thank guys. guys. All right, bye. Let's let's play some music. On play us out. Oh wait, is this playing? It's something else. So sorry about that, guys. Are you okay? A mid dance. You stopped at mid dance. I can't. How do I get?